Okay, this is part two of unit five, lesson one, interpreting negative numbers. Uh, where we left off last time is we were about to do a card sort. And so we are ordering the cards from least to greatest. And the cards that we are talking about are all of these numbers here. So that's the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to sort these numbers in order from least to greatest. Go ahead and pause the recording as you write these numbers down, sorting them from least to greatest. Okay, and now as a class, what is the least number? What number should I be starting with over here on the left-hand side? Luis, look at your own sort. You already have it sorted out. Which is the lead least? Let's go into Caitlin. Negative 23 is the least. I know. Okay. And after negative 23, what is the next least? Tanner. Negative 10. Again, we're just going to be looking down at our own set of cards anytime we get stuck, right? Now I need to start moving some of these down. Okay. And the next one, Luis. Negative what? Sorry. Nine. Yes, negative nine. And after negative nine, then Andrew. Negative seven. After negative seven, then Emily. Yes, after negative six, Aaliyah, negative four, after negative four, Brooklyn, negative three, after negative three, how many of you guys freaked out? You're like, there's no negative five. I know, that's fine, right? Okay, after negative three, then Alexis, negative two, after negative two, Trace, yes, negativo uno, and... Uh-oh. Did I make a mistake? Is there supposed to be a zero? There is a zero. After negative one. Yes, Gabriel. And after zero, Caitlin F. And after one, Matthew. Two. After two, uh, where am I? Orion. Three. After three, see how I had to move on to the next line. You guys might have to do the same thing when you're writing the answers down on your own paper. After three, have I called on everybody? Ooh. Michael. Five. After five. Ashlyn. Eight. After eight. Now have I called on everybody? Oh, John. After ten, have I called on everybody now? I still haven't called on Andrew? I swear I did. Okay. Kale. Kale. Bladen. Yes. And then I'm going to finish it up because I think everyone had a chance. I swear he did. Okay, Tanner, after 11. I didn't just move the answer up into place. 15, and now I'm going to finish up 22 and 23. Okay. And now we are adding in the next set of numbers, which we start seeing some fractions and decimals. The second set of numbers that we need to be adding to our original set are these numbers here. The thing that is going to help us be the most successful is sorting these from least to, grace, least to greatest and then adding them into our other set. So let's do that first. Focusing just on your yellow cards in front of you. What is the least? The most negative number, what is it? Luis. Go to Matthew. What is the most negative, the least number? Yes, negative 22 and 3 eighths is the least number, the most negative. Very good. And what is the next one to follow that, Tanner? It is negative 31 thirds. Let's have a conversation about negative 31 thirds. We talked about this a little bit in the past. Negative 31 thirds is like having, ignore the negative for just a second. 31 slices of pie, it takes three to make a whole. That means that we end up having 10 and a little bit more. So this is all the way down to negative 22. This is negative 10. Okay, a little bit different than negative 10, but pretty close to it. And so then what is the next neg most negative number? That is going to be Orion. Close, negative 7.7, .7, yeah. 
Yep, negative 7.7. And then where do I go next, Luis? Close. There's another one. So we're down to these negatives here. Yeah, that one's going to be the next one. And now we're to the negative 2.5. <clears throat> and now, oh, I forgot about that negative one. So where, where do these ones go? Take a look at your yellow papers. You already have them sorted at your table. So take a look at your yellow papers. Luis again. Negative eight thirds. Good. Now again, let's think about what this means. Eyes on the screen. This is, again, ignore the negative for just a second. This is eight thirds, meaning we have eight slices of pie. It takes three to make a whole. How many holes do we have then? We have two holes. How many extra slices do I have after I've made those two holes? Two more. So two and two thirds. Which is bigger? Two and two thirds or two and a half? Luis? Two and a half is bigger? Depends on if I'm talking positives or negatives, right? Which one is bigger? Gabriel, talk it out. Good. So let's focus on the positive versions of those for just a second. We've got the 8 thirds and we've got the 2.5. You just said that 8 thirds is 2 and 2 thirds and that's going to be bigger. So if that's going to be bigger, when I'm looking at the negatives, that means this negative 8 thirds is going to be more negative, right? If this is bigger than when we go to the negative side, it's going to be more negative. So that's the correct way to do that. And now we're to negative 9 eighths and negative 1 fourth. Which one is next? Aaliyah. Yes, negative 9 eighths. Because again, if we're looking at this improper fraction, we have 9 slices of pi, 8 to make a whole. That means I have more than a whole. Here, 1 slice of pi, and it makes 4 to make a whole. So I have less than a whole. And I don't know if you noticed, we have positive versions of each of these which means the most negative, when I'm looking at positives, is going to be the most positive or the greatest. And the next most negative is going to be the next most positive, so that's going to be the greatest. So I'm just kind of trying to sort some of those out a little bit over here. We already said that 8 thirds is going to be bigger than that 2 fifths, but we've got a few more in between. Negative 7.7, .7, so positive 7.7. .7 negative five and five six and then five and five six then we can slide those ones in this one and this one all right i hope that your yellows match the same and now it's a matter of taking these yellows and putting them in the blues one last chance if you haven't already done so make any corrections that you need to with your yellows and then we can slide them into the blues go ahead and do that now i'm going to pause the recording Let's see where these all go. The le most negative, in other words, the least was negative 23, and in between those, we'll have our yellow one, negative 22 and 3 eighths. Then, going to have to scooch these over a little bit because negative 31 thirds is more negative than 10. Let me move some of this. Then negative 10, negative 9. Sorry, just trying to make that fit a little bit nicer on here. Negative 7.7 .7 is going to be more negative than negative 7. Negative 6, negative 5 and 5, 6, negative 4, negative 3, negative 8 thirds, negative 2 fifth, 2.5, 2 and a half, negative 2 then negative 9 eighths, then negative 1, then negative 1 fourth, then 0. How did the negative side of your number line turn out? Does it match mine? Yes. Okay. And now focusing on the positive side, we have 1 fourth, then 1, 9 eighths, 2, 2.5, 2 and 2 thirds or 8 thirds, then 3, then 5. Five and five, six. I'm running out of space. 
Not intentional, but. All right, there we go. Five and five, six. Seven point seven. Eight, ten. Thirty one thirds is a little bit more than ten. Eleven, fifteen, twenty two. Twenty two and three eighths and twenty three. Do your slips of paper match mine? Okay, make sure that this is written down. That's enough. Now it's time to summarize. Whenever we reach the summary page, that means it's time to take out your highlighters and make sure you're highlighting the important parts. Sometimes there's going to be some new information. There will be some new information included on this summary. Sometimes the summary will include some new information and I will let you know when it's new information, but we can use positive and negative numbers to represent temperature and elevation. When numbers represent temperatures, so this is when we're talking temperatures, positive numbers indicate temperatures that are warmer than zero and negative numbers indicate temperatures that are colder than zero. This thermometer shows a temperature of negative one degree Celsius, which we write as negative one degree C. Key thing is, although we're gonna be talking about negative numbers, there's still quantitative reasons to use them. There's still meaning in real life, and that's why we need to talk about these negative numbers. When we are talking about elevations, positive numbers indicate positions above sea level, and negative numbers indicate positions below sea level. We can see the order of sign numbers on a number line. On this number line below, I want you to add some extra information like on the left hand side is where the smallest numbers are. That's why they're negative. So left is negative and it is where the smaller numbers are. On, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> on the right, we're going to see the positive numbers. And since they're positive, this is where the larger numbers are. Which is why when you were building your number lines with your little cards, I made sure that if you started going horizontally, the left hand side was for the negative numbers. If you did it vertically, then the bottom part was for the negative numbers since they were the least or the lowest. The reason this is important is because a number is always less than the numbers to its right. For example, negative seven is there and negative three is here. If you ever are confused about which number is smallest, the smaller numbers are going to be on the left and the larger numbers are going to be on the right. If we set up the number line consistently so that the left is where the negative or smaller numbers are, this is always going to be true. So you can always plot the number and figure out which one is bigger. So again, if it were seven and three, obviously seven is going to be bigger. But when we're looking at negative seven and negative three, Negative seven is more negative. That's what makes it smaller. This information in this last paragraph is new information. There's going to be a lot of vocabulary words that are just very first introduced here. And we're going to talk about them in more depth as we progress throughout the unit. We use absolute value to describe how far a number is from zero. In other words, absolute value is the distance from zero how far that number is from zero. The numbers 15 and negative 15 are both 15 units from zero. I can't show 15 and negative 15, so I'm gonna show up here two and negative two. Here's a number two. How far away is two from zero? One, two away. So I could say the absolute value of two is two. Let's even write that down. Absolute value of two is two because it's two away from zero. But negative two is also one 
2 away from 0. It's just 2 away from 0 on the other side. So I could also say the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. The distance that negative 2 is from 0 is also 2. Both of those numbers are 2 away. And that's what it's saying down here with 15. These symbols right here, do you see that straight vertical line going up? It's kind of like a parenthesis, except parentheses are curved. When they're not curved, when they go straight up, that's called absolute value. That is different from, you might have seen these, square brackets. Okay, the square brackets are going to have that hook on the ends. These are absolute value. So when I see this, I would say the absolute value of whatever it is that's on the inside there. So the absolute value of 15, what I'm really saying, I might say the words absolute value, but what I'm really asking is what's the distance from zero. So how far away is 15 from zero? 15 away. I would say the absolute value of negative 15, but I'm really thinking how far away or what's the distance from zero? It's also 15 away. Because of that, we call 15 and negative 15 opposites. That's another vocabulary word. And it makes sense, really. They're on opposite sides of the number line. Here's zero, that middle. 15 would be over here. Negative 15 would be over here. So they're on opposite sides, but specifically, they're the same distance from zero. We're going to talk about those vocabulary words in depth in a couple of days. Just know this is kind of your preview. Did I see a hand out of the corner of my eye? What's, go ahead. Yeah, so just like we wrote up here, absolute value of 2 is 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So that's how we would answer those questions, just like what you see here. So we still use the same vertical bars. We just say the absolute value of and then whatever is inside of that. Good question. Now that we have done our summary, it is time for our cool down. Here is a set of signed numbers, 7, negative 3, 1 half, negative 0 0.8, 0 0.8. This number doesn't look clear on my screen, but on your paper it printed more clearly, and that's a negative 1 tenth, right? Yeah, doesn't print clearly on the screen. And negative 2. So I want you to sort those numbers from least to greatest. Please do this independently. You did the rest of the activity with your group, but now it's time to test out your own knowledge. Do that independently. Okay. Check your answers. The least number, the number that is the most negative, is negative 3. Then negative 2. Negative 0 0.8 is next because 0 0.8 is 8 tenths. That's going to be more negative than just 1 tenth. 1 half is next. 0 0.8, which is 0 and 8 tenths. That's most of a pi. This is only half of a pi. That's why that one's bigger. And 7. If these numbers represent temperatures in degrees Celsius, which is the coldest? The coldest is going to be, Matthew, negative 3. Because as it says in our summary, the more negative it is, the colder it is. And if these numbers represent elevations in meters, what one is the farthest away from sea level? Caitlin F. 7. 7 is the furthest away from 0, because 7 is 7 away from 0. Negative 3 is only 3 away from 0. So 7 is the furthest away from sea level. When you go to the next page in your packet, you're going to see that it is homework. So this is going to be the start of our first official paper homework assignments. The first three are very easy we're just answering questions very similar. Three, we're comparing. So we can go through the first one. Is it greater than, equal to, or less than? We're comparing three and negative three. You can look at a number line if you need to. Remember, the negative ones are the smaller ones. Positive ones are the bigger ones. So the alligator's going to come and eat 
the bigger number. That's greater than. 3 is greater than negative 3. I want you to skip number 4. This is stuff I haven't yet taught you. Because remember, this particular resource starts with unit 5, and I have not yet taught you the stuff from units 1 to 4. So we're skipping number 4. Can you do it if you want to? Sure. Do you have to do it? No. Number 5, I'm going to give you a hint on this one as well because it's not anything that we've talked about outside of warm-ups. This is equivalent ratios. Which means a type of green paint is made by mixing two cups of yellow and three and a half cups of blue, because blue and yellow make green. We want to find a mixture that's going to make the same shade of green. So we want it to stay the same amount of yellow and the same amount of blue. However, I don't want as much paint. I'm not going to be using two cups plus three and a half cups. I'm going to use a lot less. So how can I keep this ratio the same but use a smaller amount? Again, I'm going to set up the first one for you, and then I'm not going to do any more. We have three and a half cups of blue and two cups of yellow. But if I don't want to use that same amount, instead of using one cup of yellow, I can just use, sorry, instead of using two cups, I could use one. Well, if that two is changing to be a one, how is it changing? This is where those equivalent ratios come in. Caitlin? Nope, I'm not subtracting one. That's not how we do equivalent ratios. What would I need to do? Seth? I would divide by two. And since I'm dividing by two, what should I be doing with the 3.5 cups of blue? Luis? Exactly the same thing. Divide by 2. I'm not doing any more than that. Then with that as your hint, the next problem, find a mixture that will make the same shade of green, but now I want a larger amount. I want more paint. What are we going to do instead of dividing by 2? Nope, that's your, that's your homework. I'm just talking it out. The next one, find a mixture that will make a different shade of green, but we want the green to have more blue in it. So is that going to be an equivalent ratio now? So keep that in mind. So that is your homework. Please keep that in mind. Um, that's it for today's lesson. Thank you for watching.